Will you tell us your name? Uh, Anthony Allen. And what year did you graduate? 1982. How many years did you play basketball for Central? Uh, four years. And who was your basketball coach? Uh, Lee Kabuti. Uh, I also played for Tony Harris, uh, U.S. Davidson, and Tom Croy. Can you tell us a little bit about Lee Kabuti? Uh, he was a, a teacher and also a father type of figure. He really showed us a lot during uh, our, our years here at Central. Great. Now, how good were some of those teams you played on back then? Uh, they were, we had fairly good teams. Uh, they, uh, our problem was that we had a, we had a small team. We didn't uh, come through here with a lot of big guys. Yeah. So it kind of made it a challenge for us. Who were some of the team leaders? Uh, I'd say uh, I was elected as uh, captain of the team my senior year. Uh, we also had uh, Joe Stovall and Jay Downing. I'd say those were the, the other leaders. And when you look back on your career, what was a highlight or a memorable moment? Uh, has to be the slam dunk that I got against the banner. Oh, cool. At the banner. So, needless to say, we lost the game, but that was that was a highlight for me. And then coming back here tonight, the hundred year anniversary. What's it feel like to be a part of this tradition? Feels really good. Uh, the turnout is great, and it, it kind of reminds me of the old days when there were uh, Champagne Central or banner games going on. There the atmosphere and the, just the large amount of people that's here. Great. Will you tell us your name? My name is Antonio Reynolds. And what year did you graduate? Class of 1996. And how many years did you play basketball here? I played uh, three years varsity. And who was your basketball coach? Scott Davis. Tell us a little bit, of, a little bit about Coach Davis. Um, actually, Coach Davis picked me up. He saw me play a few games freshman basketball. He liked my game, so he moved me up to JV my freshman year. So I, I got that experience. And my sophomore year, I played with uh, Anthony Coons, a lot of veteran guys. I got a lot of experience doing that. So he had, Davis had confidence in me early. So he took a chance. I was one of the first ones to get moved up early. And it started a cycle for young kids playing on varsity. Uh, fiery coach, real fiery, a lot of attitude. Uh, defensive guy, he's a def just defensive coach. So, uh, fair coach, players coach. Mm -hmm. So, cool. Well, how good were some of the teams you played on? Uh, my sophomore year, we were pretty good. We finished like second or third in the Big 12. Our, my junior year, we lost all our seniors, so I was the only returning starter from that team. So, we're, we had a down year, mm -hmm. but that was an experience for me. Our senior year, we finished. Mid middle conference. Uh, so we weren't too bad. I, I was all area, all area, all area pick my senior year, all conference pick. Uh, okay. Who were some of the other team leaders? Uh, Nate Mass, my senior, he was our point guard. Uh, me, uh, I played with JD Lane. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. David Freeman. Anthony Coons, okay. uh, all those guys. Well, as you look back then, the time you played basketball, what was a highlight? I would say the rivalry games. Yeah. Or Banner Centennial. I played real well in those games. And the Centralia Tournament, I've been doing that for years. So that's always fun on um, the holiday time. And then, so how does it feel to know that you're part of a 100-year basketball tradition? I'm a basketball junkie, so it feels good. It feels good to be a part of it. I've been coming to the game since I graduated. My little brother played for us, Robert Reynolds. He's not going to be here, but he was excellent ball for us. So let's keep it going. My cousin, Latante, next to the coach. Uh, it's just family. Yeah. It's just family. Okay, will you tell us your name, please? It's Patrick Dixon. And what year did you graduate? 1957. And how many years did you play? I played two years. Well, freshman. I believe all, all of them were right. not up under Kabuti and stuff and everything. So who was your coach? Uh, Lee Kabuti. Can you tell us a little bit about Lee Kabuti as a coach? Well, I thought he's a very, very great person. When he came here, he was kind of strict on us, and we kind of had to go by the, by the rules and everything. And, and he came out and watched us play when he first came in and everything. I thought he was great. And through life, uh, He's been a very good 
good friend of mine, my wife, and and his wife worked, worked together all those years, so I kind of kept in contact and stuff and knew everything and everything. Very, very good. Well, how good were some of those teams you played on? Well, the 1957 when we went to the tournament, the state tournament, the Eli Eight was back then in '57, and we had to be pretty good. We had a pretty good record. We had 26 and 26 and five. So, so that so we kept the gym full. I had that. <laughs> kept the gym full. Who were some of the team leaders? Well, it was uh, we had our captain, which was Johnny Easterbrook and Don Hepler and uh, Sidney Johnson and Larry Cannon was, and myself. We were the five, and we kind of, the way we played, we was kind of team player and everything. We, it was, we was so good that we uh, decided uh, after the season got going and stuff that we would come in earlier at 6 o'clock and do our practice and stuff and everything and kind of get down pat everything what we were doing. So we thought that was real great. Well, as you look back then on, on your time here playing basketball, what was one or two highlights? Well, the highlight was great, great school, great school. We had a lot of we had a lot of fun and a lot of kids, and everybody got along together and everything. It was it was real, real, real great. How the state tournament was a highlight. Uh, it, well, it was it was it was the best that we got a chance to walk around school a few days when our kids stuck out and didn't have to do nothing. So that was a good point about it. And what's it feel like coming back here tonight? A hundred years of, of you know tradition. How does it feel to be a part of that? Well, it feels good to be a part of that. But I come and see a lot of the games anyway. You know, not just tonight. Just several times that I come back and watch the kids play and everything. Can you tell us your name? My name is Becky Beach. And what year did you graduate? 1974. And how many years did you play basketball? I played on the first girls team, so we only played five games. And who was your coach? Betty Teal. Do you remember anything about her? Can you tell us something about her? I don't remember much. I mean, Mrs. Miller was a PE teacher who start, started the uh, basketball program. Okay. So I just had to play five games. I think she's taught someplace else, like Garden Hills or someplace. Okay. Um, how good was the team during those five We were five and oh. Wow. Who were some of the other players on the team? Oh, there's Barb Babb and Jan Anderson and Teresa Cochran, and Melissa Breen. And what position did you play? Forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. So over those five games, what was the highlight? We beat Bloomington in quadruple overtime. Wow. It was a very long game. <laughs> <laughs> and then how does it feel to know that you're a part of the very first team, girls team here? It's good. I, you know, I keep watching them, see how they're doing after all those years. I'm just glad we got to play five games instead of none. Had to start somewhere. So. And then what's it like to know you're part of a 100-year tradition of basketball? Yeah, especially, you know, with Dad playing uh -huh. and, uh, a few years before me. <laughs> well, do you have any other comments for the camera? Anything about this? Really? Yeah. Just glad to be back. Okay. That'll Thanks. work. All right. Stand, listen. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting ready to go to law school in the fall. Um, let me ask you what you Let me think about that now. Is that what you're going to ask everybody? Yes. And it's all going to be cut and pasted, and you know, it's not going to be just a straight interview on the video we're making. It'll be just little bits and pieces. So. You won't put the whole thing in necessarily? Not necessarily. Yeah, because uh, if I thought this was honoring me. This, don't pass the questions and all What's your name? Uh, Dick Patterson with one T, P-A-T-E-R-S-O-N. When did you graduate? 1945. How many years did you play basketball here? I was a starter my junior year at guard, and uh, I was a forward in the uh, 1945, 44-45 senior year. Okay, and was that a team that went to state? Uh, both teams went both to state. Both to state, yeah. okay, great. Uh, who was your basketball coach? Harry Combs. And uh, tell us a little bit about Harry Combs as a coach. Well, I don't know what I could add to what already has been said about uh, Coach Harry Combs. Uh, he went on to university, and everybody in the community still remembers him. He was a, a brilliant uh, game coach, game time on the bench. Uh, he knew when to substitute. He, that followed him all the way to Illinois. I mean, he was a, one of the great coaches in the game. Well, how good were the teams that you played on as far as records? You went to state. Tell us a little about the team. Uh, 
my junior year, I think we lost six games is all we were. I don't remember, remember how many wins, but we had we were up in the 20s, 24, 25, and six losses. Four of those were to Taylorville, uh, who ultimately they were the first undefeated team. They went 45 and the first undefeated team in the state. And uh, we played them in the semifinals, and they only beat us four points. So that was probably the championship game. That was my junior year. My senior year, uh, uh, Jesse Clements, Ted Beach, Jim Cottrell. And that was the uh, year when we were down to seven players. Uh, after the first couple of games, we only had seven players. And we uh, finished second to Decatur. We, were, we had two losses that year. Both of them were to Decatur on their court. No, one was in the finals of the state, and the other was... We played them twice on their court. They beat us the first time by two points, and we beat them the second time. We were ranked number one the whole year after that, really. Wow. And they lost some of the finals? Well, and I always felt that we could have... I wanted to get them on a neutral floor, uh, floor and, and be full strength. But mm -hmm. We didn't have the gas to do it. What was the highlight of your basketball career, personally? The best memory or the funnest time? What do you remember the most? Oh, it's hard to tell. My junior year, we didn't. We used a man-to-man -man press, not a switching, a switching, but not a, a, a zone press where you're doubling up. You each had your own man, and so we we did a lot of shifting. But my junior year, we didn't play that way. I I got the opposing score on the other team all the time, and that was a real thrill to me to shut those guys down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, but my overall thrill is hard to point at one thing. It was the total experience. We all grew up together. And Ted and Jim and Jesse went through the grade school program here together, uh, played on the same team or against each other, and it was a whole, it was a whole experience that was real rewarding for me. Well, do you have any other thoughts to add? Any stories you want to tell, or anything about the tradition? Or history? Well, I think the uh, the important thing is is this team tonight. It's not me or our team or any of those. And uh, in the players that are playing now, but having said that, I think that this school in, in, enjoys one of the real, real traditions, uh, not just in basketball, but in, 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 in all sports. We were the first uh, school in the, in, in the United States to have 500 football victories and 1,000 basketball victories. Well, that's been carried on now. There's a lot more. And that's the kind of tradition. And I think that once in a while, you need to look back <clears throat> And uh, realize what that tradition is, and that's what John Wood has been has been doing, putting up plaques so that when freshmen come in, uh, the kids when they come in, they don't need to just read about something. Uh, they can actually look and, and see, go through Sealy Hall and see what tradition the school has, because there isn't very many schools that have the tradition that this school has. I'm looking at you, right? Yeah, you look at me. I'll ask you the questions. You answer. Okay. Will you tell us your name? Eric Burry. And what year did you graduate? 2002. How many years did you play basketball here? I played for three years. I played, I started my sophomore year and uh, up through my senior year. Uh, who was your coach? Scott Davis. And can you tell us something about Coach Davis? Uh, full of energy, yeah. I'll say that. He uh, always knew what to do, and he was a very, very good coach. It was a good basketball mind. Good X's and O's, good drop yeah. plays. Oh, well. yeah. He, he threw up quite a few plays where it was uh, – we were in the last seconds of the game that won us the game. Um, just a very good basketball line. And how good were some of those teams you played on? Uh, my sophomore team was probably the best. Um, we ended up winning regional finals. Um, we beat a, a very, very good Mount Zion team at Mount Zion. Um, and then we ended up losing to Jacksonville in sectionals. But um, that was probably the best team that we played on. However, um, the best team that we had was probably my senior year in 2002. Um, we won conference, um, and we had six seniors, and it was, we had a really good group of guys, and everyone knew what they had to do. Can you name some of those guys? Who were some of the team leaders uh, over those teams? I'd, I'd say that I wouldn't say necessarily that there was uh, – I'd say everyone was a team leader. Um, uh, Mark Bauman, Dan Thurston, um, Jay Lehman, uh, myself – James Brown, Quentin Robbins, um, just I, all, everyone was a leader, and everyone knew what they had to do, and that was it. Was really nice to play with those guys day in and day out. And if you could select a highlight or a memorable moment from your career, what would it be? Well, I 
from my career, I'd say um, the first game that I started against Muhammad. Um, we were playing against Brett Melton and um, I think his name was Matt Engstrom, and both of them went to go on and play Division One basketball. And um, it was just it was a great feeling just to be out there as a sophomore in varsity. Um, but I'd say my best memory of Central basketball, I wasn't even playing. It was uh, my freshman year when uh, we beat Muhammad um, in the regional finals at our gym and upset them because they were the heavy, heavily favored um, team that night. And we took it to them in overtime. So. Awesome. Well, then coming back tonight for this 100-year celebration, what does it feel like to be a part of 100 years of Central Basketball? It's awesome. Uh, it's, it's truly a great honor to be a part of something so special. Um, and it's, I'm just, I'm, I'm really happy to be a part of it. Got anything else you want to tell the camera? That's it. Can you tell us your name? My name is Gene Suggs, class, class of 1946. How many years did you play on the team? Played two years. And who was your coach? Uh, head coach was Harry Combs. And tell us a little something about Harry Combs as a coach. Well, Harry Combs was a, quite a taskmaster. Uh, he, he didn't mind telling you what you did wrong and what you did right, but uh, he certainly got the job done. And obviously, he was a great coach. He went on to coach for many years at the University of Illinois as head coach. Harold Jester was our assistant coach, but he was also a great uh, coach and a great person. We all sincerely liked to uh, both of them. Great. Well, how good were some of those teams you played on? Were they, were they pretty good? Were they some rough times? Or? <clears throat> well, back in the 40s, uh, Champaign High School had probably some of the greatest basketball teams ever. Uh, I believe in uh, 45, they got second place in the state tournament in 1946. Of course, the, the only Champaign team to win the state championship. And in 47, I think they got second place again. So uh, they had some pretty dynamite teams back in, in, in the late 40s in football and basketball. Who were some of the team leaders on some of those teams you played on? Well, Jimmy Cotter was a captain and uh, one of the finest players that probably ever played at Champaign High School. He went on to uh, be a member of the uh, Hall of Fame in uh, Decatur. And, uh, of course, uh, Ted Beach, uh, Fletcher, Harrison, Bobby Clark, Kirby Knox, those are some of the uh, Okay, that's great. Well then when you look back on your time playing basketball here, what are a few highlights or memorable moments that stand out for you in your mind? Of course when Champaign won the state the championship, that was the highlight of mm -hmm. all my careers probably. And uh, it was certainly an honor and a pleasure of being part of the squad. I was not one of the stars of the team, but uh, it was it was wonderful to, to be a part of it. Well, then can you explain what it might feel like coming back and being a part of this 100-year celebration? Well, it's quite an honor. I think this is the first time, of course, we've had something like this that I know of, and uh, it's great to be a part of it. It's, uh, it's, like you said before, uh, we follow the Illini, who was there one the 100 year, and uh, I did not realize at the time that uh, Illinois played uh, Champaign High School in their first uh, uh, game. <laughs> Score was a little bit one-sided, but uh, uh, it's, uh, it's quite an honor to, to be a part of it. That'll work. Can you tell us your name? Gene Ward. What year did you graduate? 1949. And how many years did you play basketball here? Well, I just varsity ball, two years, uh, 48 and 49. And who was your coach? Uh, when I was a sophomore, going back, uh, Harry, Harry Cohn, was, that was his last year. Okay. And then Harold Jester was my coach, the junior and senior year. Can you tell us a little bit about Coach Jester? 
Yes, Harold was a, a very unique individual. I think he was a, an engineer by trade and a very intelligent man. He taught, he taught all the main math courses. But um, we, had a, we had a good record, um, an average record. We got back to the state tournament um, two years under his tutelage. And the unique thing about our tenure was that when I was a junior, we lost by one point in overtime the first round. And uh, East Rockford went on to play second in the state. And then when I was a senior, Hillsborough beat us by one point in an overtime. And they too went on to play second in the state. So two years in a row it happened the same way to us. Well, who were some of the team leaders on some of those teams that you can remember, some of your teammates? Well, when I was a, when I was a junior, Rob Fletcher was a, an All-American from the University of Illinois later. Uh, he was our team captain then. And when I was a senior, George Chaplin, uh, Joe Hallback, Tom Harrington. Uh, we were affectionately referred to as the Four Horsemen. Why, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, they did uh, refer to us as such. Um, as you look back, then, what was a highlight, a memorable moment from your basketball career? Well, we continued the, the tradition of champagne basketball by I don't know how many consecutive years we went to the state tournament. Of course, it was held in Huff Gym at that time. And a lot of times when you received your tickets, they had you partially obstructed because there was a big pillar in your way. But uh, it, we, had, uh, we had a great time. And like I say, we, we continue the tradition. And uh, I not only played ball here, I came back here in 1960 and taught at Edison Middle School then came up to the high school in 1967. So I was here. This is my home. This was my junior high school. And then uh, the high school, of course, was over where Edison is located now. But uh, I was here until 93 when I retired. And so coming back tonight, what does it feel like to be part of 100 years of basketball? Oh, I, it's, it's great. This is a great tradition. And uh, I miss the kids. Uh, I really do. And, I've got some kids. I've, I coached track and assisted in football most of the time that I was here. And I've got some kids that call me. Uh, one little long jumper of mine that was all legs and all heart. And he calls me every Christmas. I think he's just checking on me to see if I'm still alive. But uh, every Christmas day he'll call me. He's in the military. And, and uh, I appreciate, that's what I appreciate about the coaching tenure that I've had, uh, the kids that call back, stop you on the street and give you a hug. Just like hugging Gene Suggs out there at a walk going off. Yeah. He was a couple years older than I was. And then you had PJ or in here a while ago, uh, Paula mm -hmm. Jones. And she was a student of ours. So. I was, I've seen a lot of them go through here. Uh, I hope a lot of them come back tonight. It's a great tradition. Yes. I'm glad you can make it tonight. Oh, I'm too. <laughs> right. Will you tell us your name? Hans P. Salim. And what year did you graduate? 30, 1936. And how many years did you play basketball here? Well, I played four years, but only varsity for two. Okay. And who was your coach? Lester Moyer. And tell us a little bit about Lester Moyer. <coughs> Well, he was kind of tough. He uh, he was primarily a football coach. He wasn't very well versed on basketball. He just sort of threw the ball out and said, "Go, go play." Uh, but he uh, he was a good judge of character and things, ability and things like that. But he, he wasn't a technician like Harry Combs was. Well, how good were your teams that you played on? Not very good. <laughs> well, who were some of the other team members, the team leaders? Some of the guys were pretty good. Uh, our captain was Bob Bates. Okay. And uh, then we had a, a player named Dale Trees who transferred up here from Sydney. In those days, Sydney and a lot of small towns had three-year high schools. They, they would go somewhere else for their fourth year, and he came up here from Sydney. And he was, he and Bates were probably our, our better players at that time. What position did you play? 
I played guard and center. Yeah. Well, what was the, the highlight of your basketball career as you look back? Well, <laughs> I don't know if there are any highlights. <laughs> One thing that sticks out in my mind, the year that uh, we played, my senior year was the first year that we had this gym, Combs, what's now called Combs Gym. We, uh, we dedicated, had a dedication game against Danville sometime around Christmas. I think it was either just before or just after Christmas that year. And we got beat. But that year, Danville had a team that went undefeated till the final game of the state tournament. But we almost beat them both times. And that, that stands out in my mind. One thing that stands out, the first game we played in here, Moyer arranged some kind of a double head. He split the squad into two squads of eight. And one squad played Muhammad, and I think the other one played Fisher High School. And one of the men, Clarence Foster was his name, was dribbling down the floor, and all of a sudden the lights went out. I can still hear him laugh, but uh, I remember that. That's been my mind forever, I guess. And what, my last question, what does it feel like to be a part of 100 years of basketball here at this high school? Well, I've, I've been thinking about it since I read about it and since I called. And uh, I don't know how I feel exactly, but I tried to think if there were any my teammates left. And there aren't. In fact, the, the team the succeeding year, class of 37, there are none of them left. And it makes you feel a little, I don't know, strange, I guess. Yeah. Well, thank you. looking at you, right? Yeah. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Why don't you tell us your name? Jay Lane. I played from uh, 1999 to 2003. And uh, who was your basketball coach here? Uh, I played varsity under Coach Davis, and I played freshman ball under Coach Woods and sophomore ball under Coach Levin. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Coach Davis, your varsity coach? Coach Davis, he's a, he's a fiery guy, and he loves to yell. Uh, one thing I remember about Coach Davis is he always thought he could play with us as far as just playing around during practice, and he never really could. Uh, the teammate Brett Schnepper used to play against him one-on-one -on -one all the time, uh, and he would always get beat badly, but he was always good on free throws, I remember that. So he used to make bets. If he would win on the free throws, uh, we wouldn't have to run. Or if, or if he would shoot the free throws and make them, he, we didn't have to run. And he always took Davis on, on, the, on, that, on that deal because he'd always make his free throws. Well, uh, how good were your teams, varsity teams? My freshman, my, my, well, my varsity teams were, were very good. My junior year, we actually won to share the Big 12 title with, uh, we, I think we shared with Normal West. And uh, we had a lot of good players on that team. Um, Eric Berge and uh, Dodd Browning and Dan Thurston. Uh, and just go Clint Robbins, they go on and on. James Brown. And uh, that was a special year. And we, we, we had a really good year. My senior year, we... Uh, <laughs> sorry. Here, hold on. Hold on. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm good with my senior year. Okay. My senior year was... Good as well. We uh, actually had about the same record as we did in my junior year, and we had a pretty inexperienced squad. But we came right, came around here. Uh, we started out real strong. You know, I had a little wave in the beginning, in the middle of the season. But later on, we finished strong, and uh, we ended up beating Centennial like that year three out of four times. That was a highlight. Uh, who are the team leaders? Uh, I think we had we had a, we had a couple. We had, the seniors were definitely the team leaders. Me and. Uh, B.J. Carter Williams, Jeremy Kreidner, and Brett Schnepper, we were all the team leaders, and we led that team pretty well, I think. And so when you look back over your years here at Central Basketball, what was the highlight? Well, I got two highlights. One is winning the Big 12 as a junior. I think that's a big highlight. And another one was when we were seniors um, here at Central in the senior season at Centennial. We were playing a game at Centennial. It was the last time we were going to play all year. We got down 18 points in the second half. And we are just playing awful. I mean, we can't hit a thing. And uh, we finally caught fire there in uh, midway through the third quarter. It ended up winning the game by four points. And uh, was a great, one of the greatest comebacks I've, I've ever seen, especially in a hostile environment like that. So that was probably my highlight in my senior season.
Do you have any closing thoughts for the camera? I'm just thankful to be part of such a tradition uh, that is such Champaign Central basketball. Uh, it's, it's so great to be a part of something that's so special. And uh, I'm always going to remember my years here at Central, and uh, I thank everyone that's played here. Here in Illinois. Okay. What years did you coach here? Here I started the 56-57 season, and I retired in 85. Okay. Uh, tell us about some of the more memorable teams that you coached. Oh, gosh. You know, probably the team that I remember the most, uh, I was probably in 60-61. They were called the Mighty Midgets. It's a little team. They had 5'4", 5'7", two guys 5'8", and one 6 foot. Wow. And uh, we won about 21 games, got beaten overtime in the sectional finals. So that was a that was a very outstanding team. And I guess the reason I remember that team is because I was playing four black kids, and that was kind of unheard of. And uh, I got a lot of flack from the fans. And, oh, they'd call my house, and if I answered, it'd be nigger lover. And if my wife answered, how you might be married to a nigger lover? And I went to see the athletic director, and I told him I was leaving. I was going back to Heron. Hey, I could go back there as the high school principal or the athletic director. And, and he said, why? And I told him, he said, that that's going to wear out. And soon after then, uh, uh, you start seeing more and more black kids. They never had over uh, probably one black kid play on a team here. So so that team, I think they played harder because they knew some of the pressure I had gone through. And that, that's probably one of my favorite teams. Of course, had three other teams that played in the assembly hall. You can't forget the team we had in 69 70, won 30 and lost four, and got uh, beat by one point in the semifinals of the state tournament. Could have won it all, but the state still doesn't see those final eight teams. And they had three when the season ended. Proviso East was rated one, uh, Galesburg two, and we were rated three. And we were all three in the upper bracket. And uh, then the bottom bracket was uh, Pure Spalling, where they were very good. And then Proviso beat us, and then the finals. They beat Spalding by about 35 points. So, uh, so that uh, those teams stand out. But uh, there's something about every team you coach that you like. Uh, pretty difficult to pick out. So. Well, then, what was the highlight of your coaching career? Oh, I don't know. I tell you, just I think having the opportunity to coach this school is a very nice, bright school to coach in. Good administrators, good teachers, and uh, I had bad years, but they didn't try to run me out of town. And, they remembered I was the same coach that was coaching when we had some talent. And uh, I never had a kid in it going eligible. And uh, I think the teachers understood that uh, the coaches put the kids' academics first. And the kid could get by with a lot, but he better not smart off to a teacher that he had a big problem. And the teachers knew that, so they give kids extra work. So it's just a combination of a lot of things. We like this community. And, you got to play second fiddle to the university, but that's not bad when you've had a bad team. And uh, so, uh, but there's a lot going on in this community, and uh, both uh, both socially and entertainment-wise, and with the university, and uh, we just really enjoyed our, our our team and had a great coaching staff. That most of the coaches that I coached with are in the Hall of Fame of their sports, and I was also the athletic director for 25 years, and so. That was also a pleasure and, and having the opportunity to work with these fine men. Can you tell us your name? Uh, Lindell Clemens. And what year did you graduate? 1985. How many years did you play basketball here? I played three years on the varsity team, played freshman and sophomore, but I was started for three years on the varsity team. And who was your varsity coach? Lee Kabuti. Can you tell us a little bit about Coach Kabuti? Good guy. You know, uh, stern guy, prepared me for the future. Uh, we still talk now, actually. He, he's a great guy. He's straight in the line with a lot of folks. Cool. Well, uh, how good were some of those teams you played on? Well, our senior record wise, we were good. We were picked to, you know, we beat a, a lot of top teams our senior year. Uh, we were picked up and won the Big 12. We didn't really achieve that. But we still had a great record in tournament times and stuff like that. It's just we got upset you know, in the first round. Uh, I don't think we realized how good we were. Who are some of the team leaders? Great voice on Lloyd Hodges, myself.
Kevin Crossland, uh, Tim McCoy, Terry Napper, who's a transfer from Rantoul. You know, great come off the guy. You know, come off the bench guy. Mm -hmm. You know. Now, what position did you play? Point. Point guy. All right. Mm -hmm. Lot, lot thinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you look back, then, uh, what was a highlight or a memorable moment from your career? Whether it be individually or as a team, whatever. What, what stands out? I mean, there were a lot of individual, you know, achievements, but just being able to play for coach and be prepared to, you know, a lot of folks get on that mid-level line, you know, and not prepared to step out into the world. I think he prepared me, you know, that father figure. Mm -hmm. Great. And then coming back tonight, it's a 100-year tradition. What's it feel like to be part of it? Man, Illinois undefeated. <laughs> you know, they ded dedicate the, co the court to coach, you know. So it's just a great, you know, thing. I had, I had to get off work, you know, to come. So it was, it's a great thing. Great. That's all we need. Can you tell us your name? Paula Jones Hall. And what year did you graduate? Class of 81. How many years did you play basketball here? Four years. And who were your basketball coaches? Um, Don Hansen was our, was when I was a freshman, and I played up on varsity a little bit. Um, uh, my sophomore coach was, we just called her Red, <laughs> and she always stayed a year. And then John Hornaday was our, um, my junior and senior year. Okay. Can you tell us about what it was like to play for Hornaday? Um, it was good playing with him. He really took an interest in um, the girls' team and in coaching us. Um, encouraged, was really encouraged us. Um, uh, I had a lot of respect for him. So he was, a, I thought, a very good coach. Well, how good were some of those teams you played on? Um, well, we weren't very good, unfortunately. We didn't have very many wins. Um, we had a lot of fun, and um, we all enjoyed playing the sport. Um, we just, we had some tough competition. Um, Matt Tune and Lincoln, um, but so, you know, three wins, you know, in junior year wasn't very much fun, you know, but um, even though we didn't win, it still, you know, was fun playing and just the friendships that we made, you know, with the other girls, I just, you know, hold, that, hold on to that, it's just memorable. Can you name some of those other girls who else were on the team? Um, yeah, um, Leslie Griffith, Jenny Miller, um, Sarah Bieberman, Renee Cook, um, they were all in my class. Mm -hmm. um, we had a couple upper classmates that um, I think were very good players, Nancy Shaw and uh, Teresa O'Reilly. Um, uh, Nancy Shaw, I know, is um, in the Hall of Fame, and she just was an outstanding athlete anyway, and so it was real fun to play with her. She just, she could shoot, she could defense, she was just a real hustler, so. What position did you play? Um, I was point guard. Point guard. Yeah. And as you look back over your career, what was the highlight and what was a memorable moment? Um, I'd probably say the first thing that comes to my mind um, was when Sarah Fieberman um, either got a steal or got the ball, and so we all took off to go fast break down our basket, and she was probably about um, mid-quarter, about free throw lane, and she dribbled to the opponent's basket, shot, was all by herself, made the basket, and was so happy, we are like, no, wrong basket! <laughs> <laughs> so we teased her a lot about that. So that's a memorable moment. Six out, yeah. <laughs> Well, now that you're back here tonight, what's it feel like to be part of a 100-year tradition? Oh, it feels great. I mean, it's what an honor, you know, to know that we've played for 100 years. And I, we just watched the U of I go through that, and I thought that was really neat that, you know, wow, it's been around 100 years, and not realizing that Champaign Central was one who played U of I. And so, yeah, to be a part of this whole thing is really exciting for me, and um, to see a lot of the older players coming back, and, I mean, just from, you know, hundred years. It's just hard to imagine that it's that many years that, you know, basketball's been around and that, you know, Central has had a team, so. I, you ready? Yeah. Tell us your name. Hi, my name is Sandra Washington.